and welcome to this presentation, Oracle Database 12C in-memory column store architecture overview. My name is Jean-François Verrier, working for Server Technologies Curriculum at Oracle, and I'll be your tour guide for this presentation. The in-memory column store enables objects, table, and partitions to be stored in memory in a new format known as the columnar format. This format enables scans, joins, and aggregates to perform much faster than the traditional on-disk format. Before we dive into this new architecture, let's review some basics first. What you see on this slide is the visual raw format representation of a relational table. Here, table sales has four rows and six columns. Using the in-memory column store feature, the same table is represented in a columnar format. Now, imagine you rotate the sales table 90 degrees. You obtain the pink table on the slide. Now, reverse it, and you get the visual columnar representation of the sales table. With this vision, Rows are now what used to be columns. Now, let's have a look at a closer logical representation of the sales table in row format. You see a row starts with a row ID, followed by the first column value, then the second, etc. Then you find the second row, and so on. With this columnar representation, things are very different. The first part of the table structure is in fact the first column. You find the first value associated with the first row ID, then the second value of that column associated with the second row ID, etc. One of the benefits of that representation is the possibility to compress data. Here, because the first two values of the state column are California, it is easy to compress. Using the in-memory column store feature, there are free compression levels using different compression algorithms you can request. The other big advantage of this in-memory columnar representation is the possibility to do what is called vector processing using very fast SIMD processing, which stands for Single Instruction Processing Multiple Data Values. If you want to find all rows for sales done in California, all you need to do is to scan the state column and count the number of occurrences of the state of California. With SIMD processing, we can check 16 values or entries of the state column in a single CPU cycle. For OLTP workloads, the idea is to make DML faster and reduce space usage by dropping what we call analytic indexes and use the in-memory column store instead. Other indexes, like primary key indexes, should be retained anyway. In terms of queries, using in-memory column store feature is ideal for scanning large numbers of rows and applying filters, querying a small subset of columns in a table, joining small dimension tables to larger fact tables, or aggregating data. Removing analytic indexes greatly simplifies tuning and eliminates ongoing administration. After the logical vision, we can start talking about the implementation at a high level. There are two aspects of this implementation. Here, we look at the space management level. You can see the logical columnar representation, and each color is used for a different column of the sales table. Now, if we look at the sales table representation on disk, it is stored, like before, using what we call a segment represented by blocks on disk. Here, we use the default block size of 8K. To represent the columnar version of the sales table in memory, 
the system stores in memory a predetermined number of rows using what is called an in-memory column unit. Conceptually, the table's rows are divided into large chunks called in-memory column units. And within those chunks, each column is stored separately in a contiguous region of memory. The chunks will be large enough to achieve the maximum possible scan speed. Unlike conventional database blocks, which are typically 8 kilobytes in size, IMCUs are orders of magnitude larger, typically 1 million rows or more per EMCU. The exact number of rows per EMCU is determined at runtime and based on table size and structures and memory constraints. The performance of queries with simple predicates against the in-memory column store is much better than the same query against the buffer cache because the in-memory column store has access to the minimum and maximum values of each of the columns for each EMCU. The column in the where close predicate is compared to the minimum and maximum range of values stored in each EMCU of the column. And if the value does not fall in the specified range, the EMCU is completely skipped. The EMCU pruning applies to queries using predicate filter on a single column such as equality and inequality. Just like exadata as storage indexes, the in-memory column store records the minimum and maximum values for each of the EMCUs or extends. Now, what did they do to our SGA to implement this in-memory column store? What you see here is what exists since the beginning. You have tables stored on disk using either a row representation or the exadata hybrid columnar compression representation. Then you find processes reading and writing to the buffer cache. In-memory column store is not changing this architecture. However, with the in-memory column store feature, you get a new SGA structure called the in-memory column store. You can size with this new initialization parameter in-memory size. In addition, there is a new background process, in-memory coordinator or IMCO, that creates and refreshes EMCUs to populate and repopulate the in-memory column store. IMCO is the background coordinator process which schedules the objects to be populated and repopulated in the in-memory column store every two minutes. The space management coordinator and worker processes are background processes which actually populate the objects in memory progressively. As an administrator, you can flag a table, a partition, or even a subset of columns as in-memory via a create or alter table statement. There is no LRU algorithm to manage the in-memory objects. In-memory objects may be partially populated into the uh, in-memory column store if there is not enough space to accommodate the entire object. When this object is queried, as much of the data from the column store is retrieved and the rest is retrieved either from the buffer cache, flash cache or disk. When you access the table for the first time or when the instance starts up, depending on the priorities you define using the in-memory clause, the tables are automatically converted and loaded in memory using the new column format. This conversion is done each time the instance restarts as the in-memory column store copy resides only in memory. Now, whenever you select from that table, 
the optimizer can go either through the buffer cache or the in-memory column store depending on which way is evaluated to be faster. This is done automatically and transparently to the application. Updates are a little bit more complex, but to put it simple, both the buffer cache and the transaction journal are updated as well as corresponding EMCUs and validated. The idea is to make sure we will be able to do read consistency when going through the column store. The EMCUs which have had DMLs are not refreshed on queries. The rows which have changed since the EMCU was loaded will get all the modified rows from the journal, so there is no refresh at the query time. The EMCUs are refreshed from the transaction journal based on some internal threshold, which include the number of invalidations or changes to the rows per EMCU. They may also be triggered due to rack invalidations and transaction journal running low on memory. We use the same IMCO, CMCO and worker processes to repopulate. There is one last property you can define for in-memory tables that is a rack property. Here you can see on the right a four node rack cluster. Each node has its own SGA and in-memory column store. On the left we have two tables we suppose being represented in a logical columnar format. The sales table has four partitions one for each quarter, and the shipping table is not partitioned. In a rack configuration, you can specify for a given object, table or partition, whether that object should be distributed into each instance's in-memory column store, like for the sales table here, where each partition is loaded in one particular in-memory column store. This approach makes sense when you have a table that is too big to fit into a single instance's in-memory column store, but it can fit in the aggregated space available across all instances. Or whether that object should be duplicated across each instance's in-memory column store. Here, the complete shipping table is loaded and duplicated in each in memory column store. This is the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching.